but then we stop. We don't allow that, what you call a kick in. That what is being done as a strategy to kick in, we allow situations, circumstances, people, things going on in our lives to stop us short when God says your breakthrough is right around that corner. Yeah. Yeah. And so I kept it, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. See, because the more you confess out of your mouth, see, you were confessing out of your mouth. We were singing and praising God, but we were confessing that we were conquerors. And I'm telling, and, and, and she ran over to me. She said, Dr. Dr. Odom, she said, uh, the shackles have been broken off their feet, but they don't act like it. And I was like, mm hmm. The more than a conqueror, see, because the more you become a conqueror, the more shackles break. Yeah. See, because it's, see, because you have to understand that your realization of your of your conquering or your realization of your freedom starts here. That's why you can read the word and nothing happens. That's why you pray, nothing happens. Because there's no connection here. The Bible says, so whatever man thinks, so is he. The thought process of an individual destroys what God is trying to do in their lives and they find themselves still tangled, entangled with those same things over and over again. Mm -hmm. And so what we have to do as a strategy to overcome our minds is that we have to override it. Yes. And when he was saying more than a conqueror, more, I'm more than a conqueror, you were overriding what your mind was thinking. Yes. Yes. You were overriding the fight yes. in your mind. You were overriding those things that might have come in. You know how things sneak in. How, yes. how uh, 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 we, we begin to think of things. We can be in a big praise and God can be in the midst of us. But our mind Amen. is totally somewhere else. Amen. But the strategy behind overcoming your mind is repetition. Amen. Yes. Yes. It's repetition. Doing it over and over and over again until it disconnect. And the only way that you're going to, and, and, and it's just like it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual. When anyone begins to do anything, let's just say your body, you begin to uh, go to the gym, you begin to work out. And anything you do for a long period of time repetitiously, it overrides what once was. Yes. 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 So it is in the natural as it is in the spiritual. Uh -huh. That I override everything that's a lie. Amen. 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 And Thank then you. he said, I'm more than a conqueror because I what? Conquer the lies. Amen. Amen. I'm more than the lies. Amen. I'm more than the destruction. I'm more than anything that the enemy can tell me. I'm more than that. So all of a sudden, then my spirit kicks in again, takes me to another level. Yeah. Now, I'm just experiencing this. I, I'm just saying that this is strategy, y'all. Yeah. But this is what I'm experiencing in the song. Yeah. And my spirit man begins to connect to the language of emancipation proclamation. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm no longer bound, right. but I'm a conqueror. Yes. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I walk. And I hear, I speak, I move in, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. See, you have to have the word of God continuously proclaiming your freedom. Yeah, you can proclaim your freedom too, but the word of God, faith come by hearing. And the more you hear the word, and like I said, the more I heard him say, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Things begin to change in my thought process. I started out one way. But at the end of that song, I was in another level, another dimension. So that's the reason why the praise and worship is important in your get into the next realm with God. So y'all, you know, y'all that come in after praise and worship and you, know, you see, you, you come to try to get the word, but you got so much stuff in your mind. You need to praise. You need to praise God 
and let him release all that stuff off of you. Yes. You, you need to give him praise for your living. You need to give him praise for waking you up this morning. You need to give him praise that you got the activities of your limbs. You need to give him praise because you are alive. Blood running warm in your veins. You got to come and give God praise and worship. Strategy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, praise him. There's deliverance in the praise.
Change, change. Yeah. See, some of y'all ain't got it yet. Yeah. It's sad for your chains to break and you don't know it. woman 
And, and you might know her, she's an actor or, or, or something, model or something, but her name is Megan Fox. Okay, yeah. And Megan Fox is telling people now that she went to hell. Mm -hmm. She went to hell. She's an actress, a, a, a model, I don't know what she is, but, but, she, but she's really, you know, famous. Yeah. And she's telling, she's telling this on this YouTube, well, let me put it like this, this guy pulled this YouTube, and he began to play the YouTube to show where New Age, now this, this, is, this New Age is more popular, because he said, and it, and, it, and it struck me, it made me mad, because he was telling the truth. He said, why are people going, trying to find supernatural experiences when all the supernatural experience should be inside of the house of God? Amen. Yes. Amen. Nothing is more supernatural than God. That's right. Amen. But she said she went to the Caribbean somewhere over in another place and, and she took a drug. She took this drug and she said that when she took this drug, she went to hell. So the guy who pulled it said, okay, and after he got through listening to what she was saying, he automatically knew, because when I got through listening to her, I automatically knew she had never been to hell. She went on a trip. Because if she would have went to hell, she would have came back changed. She would have dropped everything, what she did, everything she was, everything she was doing, all of that, even the world, and she would have came to God real quick. But what I'm, what I'm trying to get you to see is that, that it is very important that the body of Christ begin to know who they are. The body of Christ needs to come to a place where they are not bombarded with all these things that they cannot and sh go out and show a dying world that Jesus is alive. Jesus. Amen. And that the supernatural things that they are seeking, seeking after are not going to do anything but give them troubles and give them a lot of hell. Real hell. Real hell. But the supernatural that they are looking for, it is in the house of God. It's in here. But the church has become carnal minded. Yes. Yes. Uh, ever since ever since the pandemic came on and ever since uh, uh, this thing showed up and everybody talking about, well, I wonder when God going to uh, uh, move uh, co uh, uh, the coronavirus. I wonder when God's going to take it away. God didn't put it here. Amen. Amen. And you know, he, God didn't put it here, so that let me know that I, as a kingdom minded individual, one that God has given authority, that if every body in the body of Christ uh -huh. will understand and know what their place and their position is when it comes to anything in the earth, if we come together and unify with one great power, we're able to wash out and move anything. Amen. We're able to destroy it, demolish it, so it would never ever step foot or never ever touch anything else. That's right. But the church, the church. is asleep. <laughs> the church is just having church now. And and, and people are they're coming. People are there are some people who are gathering. There are some people who ain't gonna never come back. There are some people who desire to do Zoom because they are so afraid of con rock coronavirus. Coronavirus is a substance of fear. Amen. Well, at any time, and this is what this is what every time is at any time you can't breathe, fear sets in. It sets in, and when fear sets in, you're totally bound to go ahead and die because fear paralyzes. And it grips you to the point that you're not able to come out of where you are. You start to panic. But if we understand who we are, if we understand that God is a deliverer, that God is a healer. And that COVID-19 is nothing but a pestilence. 
And if I really believe Psalms 91, Jesus. it can come down my it can't come down my dwelling, neither can it touch me. Because I believe what the word of God says. Now, if I'm not in a place in the word, I can't fight. I don't have no strategies. I don't know that my God can heal. I don't know that my God can deliver. I don't know that my God can really bring me out of this. Because I have not seen it or have not registered in my spirit from the word of God. That's, that, that's why it's important, you know, that's why it's important that you are able to go uh, to the word and be able to be in the word. Because the word of God is what's going to keep us people of God. The word of God. So I came to, to give this strategy today. And the Bible says here in Revelation 11 and 15, it says, Then the seven angels sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom, the dominion, the rule of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of our Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. Take me to King James Version. Oh, it. Yeah, yeah. it reads it a little bit, a lot, lot better. Just, I mean, that breaks it down, but I, I want to, to bring something out of it. We saw even today the clash of the kingdoms. Yes. 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 There is a clash. Yeah. And, and, and this is what I want you to understand. When we talk about warfare, I'm not, say, I'm not telling you to war against the enemy because the enemy has already been defeated. taken care of and defeated. Yeah. That's right. But you do need to war for your mind. You do, you do need to war for the things that you are are, 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 are trying to achieve and yes. trying to make sure that comes comes to fruition in your life. You do need to war with that. Amen. Amen. So it says, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. So that any kingdom... Any kingdom that tries to override the kingdoms of our Lord, any kingdom, any kingdom cannot stand. Cannot. So that means that Satan's kingdom cannot stand under the kingdom of our God. That's why I say he wrote, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Sickness does not reign. Heartache does not reign. Does not reign. Our God reigns. Reign. Reign. He is all powerful. Yes. He is the one who does great and mighty things. Yes. Our God yes. reigns. Yes. And so with the clashing of the kingdoms, if we are not aware that we are involved in the clashing of the kingdoms, and I'm not saying that we are going to war with the enemy because we don't war with the enemy. We overcome him. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. And when we are able to overcome him, then we can say that the kingdoms of our Lord and of our Christ, the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our Lord and our Christ. Our Christ. So everywhere I go and everything I do, everything I touch, because I am in the kingdom of the Lord, I reign. That's That's right. Right. Amen. That's right. I reign. I reign. We reign. And you should never let anybody tell you that anything is reigning over you. Poverty does not reign over you. Sickness does not reign over you. Okay? Rejection does not reign over you. None of those things reign over you because you are of the kingdom of the Lord. Right. And his kingdom overrides every kingdom. Yeah. Let me give you just before I go to my next scripture. And it will be Colossians 2 and 15. I'll, we'll go there soon in a minute. The purpose of spiritual warfare is to bring in the kingdom of God on the earth. That's the purpose of spiritual warfare. And it says that we must be called to remember that the real battle with Satan was won at the cross. I lay that foundation because I don't want you to get confused that you all you got to, all you're doing is fighting the devil because he's already defeated. 
But we are fighting over our minds to believe that. Amen. Because you got to believe that he is already defeated. Because if you don't believe that he's already defeated, then you got to battle to make that a reality. You got to war to make that a reality. So the purpose of spiritual warfare is to bring in the kingdom of God. It's not to waste our time of battling something that we already have authority over. Amen. It's not for us to waste our time on something or on things that we already have conquered. That's right. You have. He has 2,000 years ago. You already conquered it. You just don't realize it yet. Amen. So it says this is the subject of great significance in the Bible. Today, the church is a model of God's reign. What God desires today, today is to expand his reigning sphere according to the mode and according to the model and through the and through the according to this model, it is through the church that God will bind Satan and destroy his power. You heard that, right? Yes. Through his him and through his church. Yes. We not this field is not the church. I am the church. You are the church. And we're going to take reign and, and take uh, 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 that place where we can come with God, get with God, and we want to bring the kingdom to the earth. So we are involved because why? Our prayers are the womb of God. Nothing happens in this earth until you pray. That's why he said it's the church that God will bring Satan and destroy his power. With the church, he will destroy his power. He has to use us in order to do anything in the earth. He's not here presently. That's the reason why we are representation of him. We are ambassadors of his because he has to use my ears. He has to use my eyes, my hands, and my legs to take me or to touch something or use my mouth to speak something that he needs to speak because he is not here personally to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he said, I am the church. I am, the church. I, am I and the church must reign. Amen. We both got to reign. Yeah. So, this is, this is, so this is his name. His name will be honored in the whole earth. His kingdom set up and his will will be done. This is the commission of the church. And this is also the purpose of the church. Church's spiritual warfare. I'm going to tell you. There are not many people who are really doing spiritual warfare. Because spiritual warfare takes you and it makes you or puts you in a place of warring. Or it puts you in a place to fight. Amen. And if the enemy has buffeted you so till he is has sucked all of your strength out of you, you're not able to fight correctly like you need to. So the strategy over anything or over whatever is going on in your life is first it has to take place in your mind. Because in your mind there is warfare going on. Oh yeah. If you, if I, I pray, if you, and I said, well, you know, I'm in the word, you know, and, and, and I'm praying, but da 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 but it's not a consistency there. I can't stay there long. I'll put it like that. When you are getting in the word and then something comes up that you think that's more important than staying in the word, yeah. then that means that your mind is not connected Amen. to the word like it needs to be connected. Amen. Right, right. And even if you tell me, well, I don't understand the word. There are 500 translations. Amen. There's no excuse to say that I do not understand the word in these times and days. Because when I was coming up, I had to learn the, the King James Version. The hardest version there is. But all of these versions they have right now will explain to you what you need to know. But you got to have a connection to know that you're in warfare. Because if you realize that you have, must have a militant mindset, your mind must be, a, it must be battle ready. It, it must be to the point because if your mind, you, you can be all 
up and, 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 and ready to go, but your mind lagging behind. Your mind is talking to you a hundred miles. Your mind is disrupting the flow of where you're trying to go with God. Your mind is telling you things that are, and, and well, they put it like this. Your mind tells you things, like he says, suggestive thoughts come. And when a thought comes, it is not your thought, but it's a thought, your thought if you receive it. That's why I say that's warfare in the mind. Because we receive too many thoughts that are not of God. We receive too many lies about ourselves that are not of God. And we allow the enemy to come in and wreck where we're going and to snatch what God is doing and, and to stop us in our, in our destiny and even the potential that's on the inside of us, we allow him to take that from us because we don't understand what he's saying and what the word is trying to get to us, to us and through us. But it's that. Give me Colossians 2 and 15 while I'm going. So we want to make sure today that we understand that kingdom warfare starts in here and we push it out there. So Colossians 2 and 15 says that when he had disarmed rulers, when he disarmed the rulers, one Lord said that he went to hell and wrecked havoc. Our God is a man of war. Do you know that? Yes, he is. How? Yeah. He is a man of war. He what? Teaches. And my fingers to fight. So that lets me know that he's a warrior. And a lot of people really don't understand that. And, 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 this, and, and I, I guess within my life, that I believe that anything that's worth taking, I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to fight for it until I take it. Yes, yes, Lord. And if I, if I understand that, then I will continue in the way that I should go. But he says that the rulers and authority, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. He said he made, he made already a public example of them. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. He went to hell. He took the keys. He took back all that. He took back everything. And then he came and said, well, let me go ahead and, and die so I can now release this to my church. My ecclesia. Ecclesia, whichever way you want to say it. I want to release it to them now. He says, because I have exhibited, I have public example of exhibiting them as captives in this triumphant possession, having triumphant over them through the cross. So he's letting us know what he's already did. But we have a tendency to think right now. What we're going through right now. What we're hearing right now. What we're feeling right now. You have to be able to override that. Because if you don't override that, that's what's going to dry you up and kill you and weaken you so you're not able to fight when it's time to fight. Amen. 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 It'll weaken you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So uh, that, 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 that steps, that stripped us naked. He said he stripped them naked. That's what he did. He went down and he stripped the enemy naked. The boldness and the confidence of God brought victory. Yes. Yes. Jesus. The boldness and the confidence of Jesus brought victory. Jesus. The boldness and the confidence of you and what you are and what you're supposed to be doing and what you're going to say and what you're going to do. And when you take it to them, it's going to bring confidence and it's going to bring boldness. And victory will come with it. Can't help, but, can't help but to. So the present age right now is the time for the church to practically realize the victory of Christ. The church did not know, the church does not know, some of us don't know, that the victory is already won. Amen. Amen. Already won. Amen. But we still find ourselves fighting a, fighting a war that has already been won. Yes. And we do that because we do not understand who we really are. We don't understand the God that we serve. We don't understand the, what the word of God says about us. So that we can get up out of the stools and do nothing. Or get up out of that place where we are. And stand up. 
the way we're supposed to stand up. Ephesians 6, 11 verse, 10 verse, Ephesians 6. So he, the head over, the head has overcome, now the body must also overcome. Amen. If Jesus overcame, that means that we can overcome. Amen. That's why I have already overcome the world. You already an overcomer. I've already overcome the world. Even the things you're struggling with now have already been overcome. You just don't know how to walk in it. You don't know how to accept it. You don't know how to how to how to strategize and, and, and work it so that it becomes to appear from the inside out. Because we are we, we we mostly catch things from the outside and try to wrap them around us. But the inside is where it works at and it comes out of you and it goes over everything. So the Lord destroyed the devil on the cross. And he produced the church with resurrection life. Today God is establishing his kingdom on the earth. Through who? Us. The church must continue to be victorious to the victorious work of Christ that he has carried out against Satan. It's our responsibility for bringing heaven's will down to the earth. It's our responsibility. It's not our responsibility to wait for the fivefold ministry to try to and bring the what the heaven to the earth. He says all of us must participate so that heaven can be brought to earth. Amen. That that is why we're here. That's why you come to church. You don't come to church just to be coming here. You come here to get what you need to go out there to bring heaven to earth. And that's and that and that is something that we must realize that we cannot keep going and we cannot keep doing. It's just coming and sitting and never taking it back out. Amen. So the Bible says in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and the tenth verse, it says, "Finally, finally, finally." He says, "Finally," because in chapters one through five. He gave us instructions about us. The book of Ephesians yeah. yes. is a book of warfare instructions. Yeah. Warfare yeah. instructions. All by itself. Yeah. It tells you about yourself. Yeah. It tells how children ought to obey their parents. Yeah. It tells you how to walk, sit, and stand. Yeah. It tells you uh, how, how, how to move in and out of the things of God. It shows you everything that you need to do. Yeah. And that's why he got here in the 10th chapter, excuse me, the 6th chapter, and he says, finally, finally. the conclusion of the whole matter. Yeah. This is the conclusion of the whole matter. That's why I said this thing right here, uh, this sixth this six chapter, and it talks about the whole arm of God. This is something that's missing uh, off of the people of God. We need to start putting them all, our armor on. And we need to let our armor stay on. Don't allow yourself to get in places where your armor dis dis disperses itself off of you. Don't begin to th let your mind wander and think and, and go here and there and your helmet just disappears. The armor will not stay on unless it is attached to a vessel that obeys God. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, Amen. yeah, I, I promise you. Amen. He says, finally, my brother, finally, my sister, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. We must be free to take the gospel to the whole world. So he's telling us, be strong in the Lord. Amen. Not strong in your own power. Not strong in what you know. Not strong in what someone told you. But be strong in the Lord. Amen. Our God reigns. You have to understand that. Amen. He is king. He is king. He is God. He is Adonai. He's, he's everything. He's El El Yom. He's Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nissi. He is all and all. Yes. All yes. and all. Yes. That's why it says be strong in him. If you allow him to be strong in you, then you will be strong in him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. So the enemy has to, has to 
has declared war on us. I'm telling you. He's been declaring war for years. And we have overlooked his warfare. And we have allowed him to be, we have allowed him to, uh, uh, us, what do we put like this? We have, allowed, we have been the, the, the pawns on his chest. Void. And we have been moved by every whim and doctrine. Tossed to and fro. Going here and going there. Wondering what, how, when, and where. And all we have to do is get in the word of God and learn the strategies of the word. Yeah. Amen. So that we can know that his war has been declared on you. See, because every time you go through something, every time something comes against you, it is a war declared upon you. Yeah. It is a war declared. I mean, even when your children, there's a war declared upon them. Yeah. All the things you've been suffering for the last 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years. The same old thing coming on you over and over and over. Solidical mindset, solidical uh, reactions. All of these things are because there was war declared on you and you didn't recognize it. When you recognize that war is declared on you, it's time to get battle ready. Right. It's time to become militant Amen. to the point that now it's time to fight. Yeah, it's time to fight. It's time to fight. And so this is what he was saying. He says he wants our worship. He wants our loyalty. He wants our souls. You can't even keep the armor on if he, if you, he, if you are not loyal to him. If you don't give him your soul, your mind, and your body, you cannot even attach the armor to you to stay on you until everything. I don't care what it is. Everything about you, everything from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, belong to him. Amen. Amen. That's what it's about. It says, "Why well, beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God." That you present your bodies. 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 That you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy. 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 And acceptable. Holy. Unto God. Which is your reasonable service. In other words, this is what I just need to order this to be doing. With no if, ands, or buts about it. All the time. This is the norm. This is the norm, absolutely. This is the norm. If you are a Christian, none of this should be abnormal to you. None of this should be over your head. This is the language of God. Yes. The word is the language of God. Yes. Everything the word says is the language of God. Yes. And so he says, beseeching. And he even goes to the, the second verse and it says, be not conformed to this world. Yes. Don't think you're going to wear his armor and dibble and dab in the world. Right. Amen. Amen. But be ye transformed. Metamorphosizing yourself, you know, like, a, and like the bum, like the butterfly goes into his metamorphic stage, he transforms into three different things before he becomes the butterfly. Amen. And so he says, "Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind." Amen. Every time I get in the word, I should become new. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Something different should happen to me. Some, my thinking process should change. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. When I get in the Word and renew my mind, I should stand on it, believe it, trust in it, and know that it yes. is what it is. Yes. Every jot, every tittle, every I, every J will fall to the ground, but he says my Word will stand forever. So if you stand on the Word, you stand forever. Hallelujah. 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 We are at war. Whether we want to be or not. <laughs> God wants to back us. What God wants back what is his. It's time to get back what belongs to God. It's time. But he can't use you. If you don't believe he's God. He can't. Amen. Not at all. Amen. 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 Amen
If you don't believe what He's already did on the cross, He can't use you. Because you don't believe that He can. God, He's looking for, for us to go out there and get it. Bring it back to Him. Go out there and snatch your children back up. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Go and snatch your finances back. Go and snatch your fitness, your physical body back. Come on, go back. Go, go, go. Snatch your mind back. Go out there. Snatch it. Get it. Bring it back. Go out there and snatch them souls and command them to come to the Lord. Destroy the hunter of souls. When we can destroy the hunter of souls, when we become soul winners for the Lord, we destroy everything because the Lord is our God and the kingdom of God has reigned and it will reign. So we destroy everything that needs to be destroyed and we bring it back to Him. We bring it back to Him. So bring it back to Him. Amen. Yes. Yes. So it says that be transformed by renewing your mind that she may prove what is good. Without the word, you can't prove what's good. Without the word of God, you can't be acceptable. That's right. That's right. You don't even know what the perfect will of God is. That's right. Without renewing your mind. So the enemy would love to take us out. Go back to the uh, uh, tip on uh, Ephesians 6 and 10. So it says, put on, he says, brother, be strong in the Lord. We did that, and then the power of his might. What power is that? It's dunamis. It's a dunamis power. That power to activate something. That power to do what needs to be done. Yeah, that, that type of power. Because, you know, demon spirits have absolutely no power. <clears throat> to bring about destruction unless they can find an opening door into a person's mind. Amen. That's how he, he destroys us. He get in our mind. He make us think something other than what we are. He talks to us with suggested thoughts, ideas, and all these other things he brings to us. And if our minds are not renewed, we believe what he said. But that's how he gets us into places we have no business being in. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. He understands that. He understands, I just got that, let me just get that in mind. If he just can find that opening. So we have to repent before uh, the enemy can build a stronghold in our thinking. That's right. Just think of all the strongholds you thought that have already been built. Oh my God. Strongholds. Fortified areas in your life, in your mind, that have lied to you for years. Yes. Yes. And still lying. Still lying. Right. Strongholds about things that you have no conscious ideal about because you won't seek the word. You won't search the word. So you bring up your own ideal of what it should be like. But the enemy doesn't got in your mind then. Are yeah. oh, he in there? Yeah. Because if you're taking your mind over the word, uh -oh. then something is wrong. Yeah. Something is real wrong with that. So the renewal of your mind is the key to controlling your life. If you renew your mind, you control your life. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say that one more time. If you renew your mind, you can control your life. Thank you, Lord. You the one have authority over everything. If you, what? Renew this. Right, right. Drink, drink. So that strong, be strong in the Lord. Dunamis means explosive strength, having ability, having power, empowered, having that inner, inner, inner strength in it, being infused with the excessive dose of dyn dynamite, inner strength and ability. It's that strong, being strong. 
I'm strong because of the word. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm strong because of the word. Yes. I'm strong See, because there are some people who will read but they won't pray. Yes. So what you strong in? Prayer? Amen. What prayer? Come on. That, what, 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 where is the prayer? You strong in prayer but you don't like the word? You don't like to read the word? You don't want to study the word but you'll pray? No, no, no. You have to be strong in the word. Be strong in the word. So you will know what God is doing and what God is saying. So he says, put on the he says what now? Put on the whole armor. Not just one piece, not two pieces. Not five pieces. He said, put on the whole armor armor of God. Why? That ye may be able to stand against the wiles. Against the wiles. Yes. Yes. That you may be able to stand against his wiles. Those things that devices. That you may be able to stand in his, in the deception. He's a Methodist or Methodist. There he is. Come on. Teach apostle. Teach apostle. Teach apostle. Teach apostle. Teach apostle. An assault. What he does, his method is an assault on the believer's mind. He comes in subtle, crafty, and cunning. He's full of tricks. Always. He's a mind game player. And every last one of us have been played by him. Oh yeah. We are, he has played us like a fiddle. He's made us think thoughts that were not of God. He's made us think about people what we shouldn't have been thinking about. He's made us think in our minds we are as don't, and, and that's what I'm saying, don't allow the enemy to make you a thinker. Amen. Because if you allow him to make you a thinker, then the word of God wouldn't be of no effect to you because now you have the thinking process of him. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, so Jesus. Good. Glory to God. Well, my, well, uh, uh, well I, just don't, I just don't believe my husband loved me. Uh, I don't believe my wife. I don't think she cared for me. Come on, Apostle. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Who she thinks she is. Mm -hmm. What 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 she think what 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 she think she what what's gonna happen with all that what she what she think gonna be doing that what she think gonna happen with, with that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm ugly right mm -hmm. I'm worthless I'm, I, I mean this 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 is thought this is thought yeah mm -hmm. come on. I ain't gonna never be nothing. I'm not gonna ever get over this. I'm not gonna ever uh, 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 be able to conquer this. I'm not gonna be ever be ever ever able to be delivered from this. This is just seems like this is always here. What? I'm I'm a think I'm thinking this. Right. Oh, God, I thank you. Reveal it, Holy Spirit. Come on, teach the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Teach Mom. Amen. Amen. You done ran it all down in your mind. And it ain't even happened. You done ran it all down in your mind and you ain't even got to the individual yet. You done ran it all down in your mind and you ain't even got home, you good. Come on now. Glory to God. Deceptive. Assault on the believer's mind. We must make a mental decision to take charge of our minds. You have to make a mental decision for that. You got to take charge of your mind. You have to discipline yourself. This is what I did. I did this because I wanted to discipline my mind. I would go to places. I would, when I would go out, I made up my mind that I wouldn't flinch every time somebody passed me, Amen. every time somebody got or came before me, unless it was my waitress. That's right. But everything else, I never glazed around the building. My husband always said, you didn't see uh, Pastor So and So. I said, I don't look for people. You didn't, you didn't do it last night? Oh, I didn't. Uh -huh. I sure did. <laughs> mm. Pastor Still. I didn't. Pastor Jones. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I just look. I mean, I can't help it. I, I mean, I trained myself to do that. And so the focus is a discipline process 
that you need so you can control your mind. You can control what goes in and out of here. You can control it. But you have allowed him to continue to lie to you over and over and over and over again about who God says you are. You're going back and forth. I mean, even in your mind about what God's saying about you. Well, that's, uh, well that, that couldn't have been God because that didn't happen. You just disrupted what God was trying to do. You just pushed him out of the way and you believe what the lies of the enemy is saying. And strongholds have been, been built in the lives of God's people. I'm talking about so strong to the point where they're not able to... to I'm not, it, it, some strongholds can't be broken overnight. Right. Yeah. 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 It takes you to discipline your yeah. mind yeah. so that you can think, yeah. not do, but think. Stand back. See where the word of God is saying in this. Let's see what God is talking about in this. And then react. Not the other way around. So because, because of so many strongholds in our life and because the enemy has control of our thought process, we do things quickly and we mess up. We say things quickly and we mess up. Because we never realize that we cannot continually to be off balance like that. We was like that in the world. But when we come to the house of God, we have to have a controlling factor here. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. I have to have self-control. I have to have temperance. And what I do, what I say, I got to think before I talk. Because you can easily, out of your mind, out of your mouth, say something in the atmosphere. Power and depth is in the tongue. You can easily say something out of, the, out of your mind in the atmosphere. And there it is. And in your mind, and like Dr. Jeffrey said many years ago, your thoughts are not there for free. You're going to be guaranteed to be paid for the thought that's in your mind. In other words, whatever you think on the most, that's what come to you. If it's the word that you think the most, the word will come to you. But if anything that's out of the word that comes to you the most, you're always thinking about it, then that's what's going to come to you. That's what brings the, the praise. Let me move on. It says, so, but put on the whole arm of God. Put on. When I put on something, that when you put on your clothes, you're putting on. That means you're doing something. You are activating the put on. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you may be able to stand. Mother was saying about that today. And when she said it, I thought about it. And I, listened, and I was just saying, I said, she was trying to get a little bit over my message. But I've always told people. We ain't broke down. No. Yes. Yes. I ain't conquering nothing down here like no. this. No. 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 Wrong position. But when a, a military soldier Come on. stands in formation, stand they stand in attention, yes, shoulders back, right. head up, head up. forward looking focused, oh, right. and ready for battle. That's, That's, right. That's it. That's it. Right. We got too many people walking around like this. Head bow, ma'am. Head bow. Come on. Back bend. Walking Come in the stuff you ain't got no business walking in because oh. she can't see. Because your head bow too low. Obtaining information that she should not be obtaining because your head too low. Your head too low. You got, to, you got to raise your head. You got to get your head up out of that. Stand up You got to stand strong. Yes, ma'am. Because there is nothing about a bent over soldier. There's nothing going to happen with a bent over soldier. And that's why he says, well, uh, we're going to stand. We got to stand. We got to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We got to be able to know who we are. We got to be able to be confrontational when it's time to be confrontational. We have to make sure that we understand that he is always bringing deception. And that he's already always organizing something against us. Yes, he is. That's right. Yes, he is. He's thinking about something right now as you sit yeah. here. Yeah. 
A soldier has to maintain a critical and strategic military position on the battlefield. Well, Dr. Odom, do I ever get off the battlefield? No. You're in, in this war, in this life, <laughs> a soldier does, does not what? War after the world or, or cause himself to be concerned with the things of the world. A soldier don't. So that means that it's battle ready all the time. Every time you, when you, if you go to Fort Lee, those soldiers are always battle ready. They are never undressed without a uniform on. But we'll pull our armor on and walk dead dab in the middle of a devil. In the middle of the devil. And say and try to fight him unarmed. We ain't been in prayer in a week. We ain't been to church in months. <laughs> oh my God. And we surely ain't fasted for nothing. And then we want to say, oh, oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna oh no, you finna get whooped. <laughs> yeah, you you fin you you fixing to get whooped. So God, he wants us to be able to stand against it. So he said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities. He has a chain of command. And a chain of command that he has, if he has a chain of command, that means that he's more disciplined than we are. Because we ain't got no chain of command. We just go take it any kind of way. We take the big at the bottom, take the small at the top, we'll take the straight, and then we'll let it be crooked. We'll take that too. But he's disciplined like that because he knows that we, are at some point, are not going to be battle ready. Mm -hmm. He already know that. We relaxed. Mm -hmm. So we wrestle not against all of that. Rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. He says, take up therefore the armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. In the, in, the, in the Strong's Concordance, I was looking at what state of it's an antihistamine. Antihistamine. In the Strong's. It means anti, against, and histamine to cause to stand. The verb suggests vigorous opposing, bravely resisting, standing face to face against an adversary, standing your ground. Just as an antihistamine blocks on, uh, can block a histamine, and a histamine tells us with tells us that with authority and spiritual weapons granted to us, we can withstand all evil forces. Yes, we can. Withstand. We can stand against anything with our God. Yes. We can stand against anything if we're in right place with Him. Yes. We can stand against anything. So He says. Take up the whole arm of God, which stand in heaven, done all to do. Then he says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Put it on the breastplate of righteousness. So he goes down and he tells us to put on these six things. Some say it's seven when they talk about the prayer. Pray in the spirit. But these six things that an individual, that a Christian should never be without. Amen. The breastplate. Your feet show with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That everywhere you go, there ought to be peace. You ought to be telling somebody about, the, about why you are the way you are. You ought to be able to tell somebody your testimony. Amen. And then you having your lawns girded about with truth. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. The, the lawn, the, the, girl, the, the, the belt is what keeps the whole armor piece together. You take off the belt, the, all the armor falls off. So if you are not truthful and you a liar. You got the armor on. You're butt naked before the enemy. That's why you got to watch what you say when, you tell, when you're saying stuff. Make sure you tell the truth. Amen. And then you have that shield of faith, which covers everything. It covers my front. It covers my back. It covers my side. The word of faith, the word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. A lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So all these things that, 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 are, that we're putting on is of God. Yeah. It's of the Word of God. Yeah. So if it's of the Word of God, that means that it works perfectly if you do it right. That's right. That's right. And so that's what we want to make sure that we're praying always in all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful 
to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that the utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel, yeah. for which I am an ambassador in Christ, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to. Amen. So putting on the arm of God is part of your strategy. Yes, yes, strategy to overcome anything that the enemy brings. You put that strategy, you put this strategy to work. Because I see a lot of people, they don't even, it doesn't even, they, they don't even mind going out of the thresholds of their house without it. And if you don't have the faith in the faith of God, a faith in his word, in any of his word, you don't have faith in none of it. If you want to pick bits and pieces, you can't do that. You can't do that, you gotta start. You have to take the whole word. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. So God is looking for us to bring the kingdom to the earth. Yes. He's looking for us. So we have to be battle ready, y'all. Yes. We got to be so ready that when we go out those four walls, when we go on our jobs, can we be ready to give them the kingdom? Amen. Not we're not that we don't want to get trying to get ready for it, but we want to be ready. Amen. Already ready to do it. This is our portion. This is what we're called to do. And I'm not, I, I'm not a person to sit back and allow other New Age movements and all these other artificial interpretations of supernatural. Artificial. All I want is organic. And our God is organic. And He is supernatural. And if you allow him to be all that he needs to be in you and through you, he will do that. Amen. There's nothing lacking. And see, because you can't be sitting here talking about, well, I just don't know about this ain't got that yet. That's just, you know, I might not be able to do this. Stuff. You, there you go. Thank you. Unwrapping your mind. Come on. No longer are we going to allow the enemy to unwrap us. And do and say what he wants to say and do. There's a mandate on this house to take the kingdom of God out of the earth. That's a mandate that we have. And that's what God has given us to do. And you can do it. Take the strategies of the word and apply them to your life. Apply them to the situations that you endeavor. And that you are trying to endure. Apply this word. Amen. And I guarantee you. God will begin to give you revelation. Yes. And give you strategies. To do what you need to do. Amen. 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 Please stand to your feet.